Psalms 55 to the chief musician on Nigel, which is uh, a string instrument, Machio instruction, a psalm of David. Give ear to my prayer, O God. David seems to say that a lot about the Lord. I mean, David, look at all the years he was on the run. He was anointed the king. And he was on the run from the, from the king. Off and on, King Saul would chase David. And it worked out good for David. I'm not going to blame David. I've been there too. Lord, come on, hear my prayer. And if you haven't been like that as a Christian, uh, you haven't been praying long. Because God answers prayers, yes, no, and not now. And David gets a lot of not now. Hide not thyself from my supplication. He's in earnest prayer now. Chapter 55. We're going to see David as a tribulation Jew. And the remorse. And the anguish. And it just touches the tip of the iceberg on how horrible it's going to be for the nation of Israel. Just a tip. They're going to cry out to God, and God's like, yeah, what? What do you want? I already told you it's going to be Jacob's trouble. I've already told you through Daniel it's going to be seven years. You didn't want to read the scriptures. You didn't want to obey. You rejected Jesus Christ. You said his blood would be upon you and your children. Okay. And he done that one time. I forget who it was. I think it was in the book of Judges. God stepped back and said, let your gods take care of you. Go ahead. And they're like, no, 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 repent. We're sorry. And they put away the gods. And God's going to answer them. He's going to give them Moses and Elijah. He's going to give them 144,000 Jewish uh, missionaries, if you will, evangelists going through the land. There will be mercy for the Jewish people because God said, except for the fact that you know, the days be shortened, even for the very elect's sake. But it's God taking the rod out and beating the behind of Israel for their rebellion. And they've always rebelled ever since coming out of Egypt. And even before that, when Moses said, God spoke to me, I am that I am. Here's my rod. Look, it's a serpent. Here's the leprosy. Here's the water turned to blood. And they were fighting Moses ever since. Attend, be present. That's what he's saying, Lord, right now. That's what that means. And hear me. Now watch this. I mourn. That's what the Jews are going to do. In my complaint. Oh, David, you complain? Who doesn't? David is complaining against God. And I do that sometimes on Facebook. And, I, and people, oh, oh, what are you, hey, I'm being honest with God. David's being honest with God. Come on, God, where are you? I'm praying to you. I'm making supplication. You're not listening to me. Where is my answer to prayer? And many Christians do not have the nerve to do that to God. Come on, God. And I've done that many times. I said, God, Jesus, don't you remember how much it hurt? Don't you remember crying at a funeral, Jesus? Are you not afflicted with the afflictions that we have, Jesus? Have you not been touched with, 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 with the infirmities that we have? Where are you, Jesus? Come on, and right now I'm going to the Bible. It's not meat that man should be left alone. God, come on. It's a favor that God gives a man a wife. Well, come on, God, where's my favor? And David has more right because he has been anointed by God. He has done everything correctly when it comes to King Saul, and he's getting the wrong end, or he's getting the, uh, what's the word? Life's not being fair for David. And all they that live godly in Christ Jesus, for us Christians, all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Saul hated David because David did right. Saul hated David because the kingdom was going to go to David by God. 
and make a noise. He is seriously groaning and moaning, almost type of the Holy Spirit, where the Bible says he makes his intercession with, with groanings. David almost comes a type of Holy Spirit, and I don't want to cross that lane. Now, I don't know if I have ever been so afflicted. I make a noise to God. The Bible says make a cheerful noise in the Lord. Uh, that's not a cheerful noise when you got more and complaint. I don't know what the uh, agony I... Because of the voice of the enemy. Well, the enemy would be Antichrist in a tribulation period because of the oppression of the wicked. There's the Antichrist. Like I said, when you got the wicked, that's a reference to the Antichrist. For they cast iniquity upon me. Their charges, accusations. They applied accusations and charges against Jesus. And they're going to find any charge they can in tribulation so they can torture and kill that Jew. And in wrath, they hate me. Not only do they hate me, but they they got wrath. That's the Antichrist. Four and five. My heart is sore pained within me. Now, this is the supplication. David is saying, my heart aches. I am distraught. I am depressed. I am put down. I am complaining. I am mourning. I'm making noise. Where are you, God? And the terrors of death are falling upon me. That's going to be the tribulation period. Saul is out to kill David. He ain't out there to say, all right, come on, David. Let's go. Let's have a little banquet meal here. Man, I think it's three times he tried to take that spear, thrust it at David, once at Jonathan. He's got a whole army of thousands of men to go out. Thousands of men going out to David. He comes to uh, Michael one time. He says, hey, bring me David. Well, Michael said he's sick. Bring that man on his bed to me so I can kill him right here in my presence. They find out, you know, Michael let him go. And it was an image. Fearfulness. Try to tell David don't fear. Try it. And yet when the disciples are with Jesus on the boat, Jesus, where is your faith? Jesus is not with David right now. And David does not have the promises that we have. That's the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. The disciples sat and ate and, and had fellowship with God himself. David doesn't. And we get fear. We get, I mean, we're human. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me. I mean, he's got the shakes. It's serious. And horror has overwhelmed me. David ain't just having a little tantrum tantrum. He's, he's serious. And he's a God with all this, where are you? So what do you do with those people who say name it and claim it? You know, if you give God $10, he'll, give, he'll take care of you for the rest of your life. What are you going to do with the story of David? David was a man after God's own heart. Find where it's written about any Christian in the New Testament about that. Find me in the Old Testament where a man committed a murder and adultery, and God says, hey, you know, you're my son. I don't think Solomon murdered anybody. I don't think Solomon committed any adultery. He had a thousand wives, but I don't think those charges were brought. I mean, he did, he did idolatry. 
He worshiped fallen gods. And he too was called a child of God through the promises of David. So where do you get off saying, well, I'm a Christian, everything in my life is going to be hunky-dory. If your life is going to be hunky-dory according as a Christian, God would have to promise to date, have to, have, not promise, date, God would have to uh, apologize to David. And he's not going to apologize to David. David, I'm so sorry I did not answer your prayer. David, I'm so sorry I let you go through the show. Because, you know, I let these Christians over here, I let them have a luxury, wonderful, great life. Look, watch the tribulation period now. Ready? Here we go. Some people think I'm full of it. I'll show you the tribulation period. And I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove. For then would I fly away and be at rest, escape. Lo, then would I wander far off and remain in the wilderness, Selah. Okay, you said that Selah, that's a musical rest. That's a part of the tribulation period. Let me show you. Look, read, read that yourself, six and seven. Okay? If I can fly away, I'll go to the wilderness. Let's look at Matthew 24, 20. And I'll show you that that is tribulation with scripture. If you say it's not, you are denying the scripture. You're at error. Uh, Matthew 24, 20. Watch this. Watch. Jesus is talking about the tribulation period. Ready? But pray. Is that what David's doing? That your flight. Well, what's a flight? Is it something that has a wings? Pray that, pray that your flight be not in the winter. Airplanes will be grounded with the snow. Neither on the Sabbath day they're going to be closed. All right, well, that, that, you know, Revelation 12, 14. Let's go right into the tribulation period. Revelation 12, 14. Now, it says an eagle, but... Eagle and the bird are the same thing. Revelation 12, 14. Ready? If you're going to miss it, don't miss it now. Ready? And to the woman, Israel, were given two what? Wings. Is that not what David said? Of a great eagle, that they might fly into... What did, what did David say? There it is. I'm going to write that down right now. That note. Psalm 55. Did you miss it? Do you refuse to miss it? Do you see that in Psalm 55, those two verses in Matthew and Revelation? Did you see that that's the tribulation period? Do you see David, a type of Israel, in the tribulation period? He says, oh, if I could get me an airplane long before airplanes are going, I'm going to fly to me in the wilderness. Matthew 24, Revelation 12. And Jesus says, I hope that flight's not in the winter, and I hope that flight's not on the Sabbath. Meaning the Sabbath is going to be back in the tribulation period. Means the Sabbath, everything's going to be closed. Verse 8. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Oh, there was a wind and te tempest with the disciples. And Jesus said, hey, where's your faith? Oh, little, oh ye little faith. Jesus is right there in the boat. You know where David has in his boat? Nobody. <laughs> According to David, God's gone. God ain't listening. Well, God's listening. We know that. But that's the difference between David. You know, the people of the Old Testament saw Calvary. David don't see Calvary. David said, "I'm going to die." <laughs> Matter of fact, David overlooks Calvary and looks into the tribulation period. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Big storm. Violent storm. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues. For I have seen violence and strife in the city. The city, I would assume that's Jerusalem. The city. Day and night, they go about it upon the walls thereof. Mischief also and sorrow are in the midst of it. 
I'm assuming he's describing Jerusalem. Wickedness is in the midst thereof, the city. Deceit and guile depart not from her street. Talk about Listen, that's... <laughs> only time that ain't going to happen is going to be the millennium. Now watch this reference. 12 to 14. For it was not an enemy that approached me. It wasn't my enemy. Then I could have been born it. If the person I'm talking about now, if he had been my enemy and done what has happened, I would expect it from my enemy. But the person right now I'm going to talk about, I would never expect it. Though Jesus would, because Jesus knew. Neither was it that hated me that did magnify himself against me. We're going to look at one man particularly. David said, the man wasn't my enemy and he did not hate me. Then I would have hid myself from him. If that guy hated me, that guy was my enemy, I would have hid myself from this man. But it was thou, a man, my equal, my guide, and my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked into the house of God in company. That is Judas Iscariot with Jesus. David has described the character of Judas. Judas did not hate Jesus. Judas was not an enemy of Jesus. Listen, the devil did not enter Judas until the night of the Lord's Supper. He said, go do it thou. Then the Bible says the devil entered Judas. And Judas had remorse after he realized what he, I had betrayed the innocent blood. He didn't go to God. He went to the priest and died and went to his own place. Guess who's coming back in the tribulation period, though some people say you're foolish? Judas, as the false prophet. And we don't have time to get to that one. But Judas is coming back too. Let death seize upon them. Let them go down quick into hell. Oh, David. David. David, David, David. I can't believe uh, Schofield's knowing. He has no the grave. Who are you, a Jehovah Witness? Don't pay attention to all the notes that your Bible behold. Some people say, Shilo. Shilo. Some, some Bibles say, Hades. It's H E L L, as somebody would say, go to hell. I've never heard anybody tell me, go to Hades. I've never heard anybody say, go to the grave. That footnote is a, is a Jehovah Witness footnote. That ought to have been raised out of the Bible. For wickedness is in their dwelling and amongst them. They dwell in wickedness. And wickedness walks with them. Well, guess who that could be? Death in hell was cast in the lake of fire. As for me, I will call upon God. And the Lord shall save me. I thought he wasn't listening to you, David. You see, when you listen to a Christian that has got troubles and problems in life, don't really listen to him. He's in anguish. Like the book of Job. He's in anguish. And if he truly, really believes the Lord, he believes oh, he's just in anguish. He's upset. He's in pain. He's in sorrow. He's got problems. And you better shut up because maybe God will give you a dose of reality. Maybe God will give you a dose of reality. And you don't want God to give you a dose of reality. Because if God gives you a dose of reality, be not deceived. 
God is not marked, but whatsoever man sows, that he shall also reap. If God's going to have you reap what you've been sowing, you're going to get it far worse because you always get more crop than you do what you planted. Listen, I can't describe this how I feel, but I know God loves me. I love God. I know God's with me. I know God walks with me, but I have this loneliness. If I can't describe it, how are you going to tell me how I feel? Just pray for me. Pray for those. Keep your mouth shut. David, start up. God, hear me. God, you're not listening to me. God, I'm complaining. The Lord will call. I call upon the Lord and he'll save me. David's lacking patience and David has patience. David's lacking hope, but he has hope. I'm with David right now. I have lived the Job life, and now I'm living the David life. And as we've been doing 54, 55 chapters tonight, and when I'm lying alone and with the Lord, and I, I sin, and I'm talking to the Lord, and I'm praying, and I'm repenting, the words of David through the Psalms are coming back to me. Evening and morning. That's how it's said in the in Genesis 1. Even in the morning where the Look at David quoting the scripture. I do that to God all the time. I will take scriptures and rightly divide them and say, God, what about this? We say, well, that verse you say, man should not, you know, a man should not dwell alone. I'll make it help me. That was just for Adam. So God only made one woman for one man for all eternity. Really? Where did Cain get his wife? <laughs> you tell me that only Adam and Eve, where Adam says he shall leave his father and mother, and they shall be. You tell me Adam is the only one that ever left his father and mother? Adam had no father and mother. How could he have left them? You mean to tell me every person that gets married, the husband and wife moves in with his mother and father? Everybody? You've got to rightly divide. Bible says in Proverbs, I'm talking about my life today. Lord God says, if, if, if you give a man a wife, it's a favor from you. God, where's my, you've already given me two great favors. I'm looking for a third one. Bible says, ask, seek not. Bible says in James, you, you receive not because you ask not. David's asking, will I pray and cry aloud? Well, that's not a Hannah prayer. Hannah is praying. Her mouth is moving, but nothing's coming out. David's out loud. And he shall hear my voice. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from me. Attend unto me, hear me. David's not contradicting himself. David is having a problem in his life. He believes God, but he believes God's not being quick enough. I can relate to that. With the sin of impatience. He has delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. For there were many with me. God shall hear. And afflict them. Even he that abideth of God. Selah. There's a second advent passage. God's going to get the Antichrist. God's going to get the goat nations. He'll get them. It'll take seven years. Can you imagine how long that seven years is going to feel to a tribulation? Anybody? Gentile or Jewish person? That's going to feel like a long time. But God says seven years. You know how long it's going to be? Seven years. Because they have no changes. 
Therefore, they feared not God. You know that change? They had never repented. They had never got right. You know what the book of Revelation said? I think one thing, something hit the seed of the bees. <coughs> they cry out in agony and they curse to God. And they repent not. Is it not written also in Revelation that they give not their sorcery? They haven't given up their witchcraft and they curse God? They're not repenting. Saul repents, but he's got that worldly repentance. You're not going to see any repentance of any of the wicked people in the tribulation period. He has put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. Go to Revelation, I think it's 5. I think it's 5. Revelation 5. 5 or 6. I'll show you tribulation period again. If you don't believe it, then you're the wrong one. Uh, Revelation 6. Revelation 6, 2. And I saw, behold, a white horse. That's not Jesus. And he that sat on him had a bow. You know what a bow is? And a crown. Jesus has many crowns. Jesus has a sword, not a bow. And given unto him, and he went forth to conquer. I mean, went forth conquering and to conquer. What do you need a bow with? Where's the arrows? Watch. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard, a, I heard the second voice say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red. And power was given unto sat thereon to take peace. First horse. First horse. The Antichrist comes with world peace. But it ain't going to last very long. Such as be at peace with him, the Antichrist. He has broken his covenant. The Bible records, I forget what book it is in the Bible, that, that the Antichrist is going to make a covenant with Israel. In the midst of that covenant, he's going to break that accord. He's going to break that peace accord. Three and a half years. He gets three and a half years of the Great Tribulation. There it is, Psalms 55. But in order to get that, I've dealt with people. Oh, I just read my Psalms. That's very good. Psalms are a wonderful book. But you got to read Daniel. You gotta read Isaiah. You gotta read Ezekiel. You gotta read Jeremiah. You gotta read Matthew. You gotta read Revelation. You gotta read Thessalonians. You gotta read all the books and get the whole story. If you just read through Psalm 55, okay, that's it. You don't see the future application. And if Jesus Christ fulfilled all the first advent prophecies, and he did 100 percent everything we're reading right now is gonna happen again. The words of his mouth, the Antichrist, were smoother than butter. He's slick. He'll sell you anything. He's a great deceiver. The liar, the father of it. But war was in his heart. Revelation 5. He comes in with peace, but he's got war. His words were smooth, softer than oil, peace. Yet were they drawn swords. Revelation 5, the red horse. You see the tribulation period? Do you see the scriptures? Now here's an interesting. 1 Peter 5, 7, Matthew 6, Luke 12. Cast thy burns upon the Lord. There's Jesus Christ. He shall sustain thee. Bear. Uphold. Keep you from falling. Hold you. These he shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. There's a. That's for the Jews in the, in the time of Matthew. And that's the Jews in the tribulation period. Bear trust in the Messiah. Oh, you're going to move, Revelation 12. God's going to fly you to the promised land. I mean, to the wilderness, excuse me.
What's the burden? There's a dense death sentence on the Jewish people. What's the burden? Oh, you want uh, uh, you want your Passover bread? You want the lamb? You got to receive the mark. No mark, no business. Bible says no man might do any business, any trading or buying or anything unless he received the mark, the right hand or his forehead. But thou, O God, shall bring them down into a pit of destruction. That would be the lake of fire. Not called the lake of fire. David knows about hell, but he doesn't know about the lake of fire. Bloody murderers, deceitful men, shall not live. He that has not the sun shall not see light. Out half their day. But I will trust in thee. And David closes. 